the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, have you checked your fruit today? Have you checked your fruits after we started the series? We did the first round, and this will be the second round. Dealing with fact is, have you checked your fruits today? You know what? That's something we do every day. It's, a, it's, it's just a character of nature. All I'm sitting there saying is, for those of you who want to come into the body of Christ, but say you're not ready yet, because you don't know all the language and all the rules, you don't know how to quote all the scriptures, you don't know, this is different. And this is the real responsibility of every believer. Because, see, you can go to church. You can say the, uh, the, the different language, God bless you, hallelujah, and all that stuff. And you can sit there and quote scriptures and pray loud and loud for everybody to hear. You can be in church every time the door's open. But if you act like some mean person, when you outside of that four walls, when you act mean and rude in your home, when you act mean and rude at your job, when you act, act mean and rude being out in the streets, but then you can come into a church building and you can sit there and act like the perfect angel. God's not impressed. And you, as somebody coming to the body of Christ, just be who you are. If you're somebody with not an intent to hurt people and put people down, that's a that's a great start. That's what it's telling you looking for. We're not looking for people that's devising evil. We're not looking for people that want to be an actor. If you want to go, you want to act, go to acting school. Come to body, come to Christ as you are, and just grow in him. Let the Holy Spirit and his character and nature, by the fruits of the Spirit, be what's manifested in you and manifested in me. Some people say, what is it, what are they called the fruits of the Spirit? You know, it's the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. It's the characteristics that the Holy Spirit brings into us. You know, here's, here's the, it's found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which means patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, which means faithfulness, meekness, Temperance, which means self-control. Against such, there is no law. You're not gonna. Somebody gonna sit there and arrest you because you love. Maybe, can you imagine that? It's not gonna give you the marriage because you love somebody. Even the person who tried to give you the ticket, you say, "Well, God bless you. I love you. Hallelujah." That freak might want it. But the bottom line is, respect the person, and 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 give people respect when they don't even deserve it. Do good even though good is not done to you. But you, you're you going to be, because the whole purpose is your life. It was matters as far as you bear fruit, not with the people around you. Don't let them get stuck with that. And don't even worry about the, the people who know how to quote scripture, Bible scriptures and know how to pray and, and know how to go to church every time the door is open. I'm saying is that person should go because that's what they want to be. That's how they want to, to, to worship and, and operate as a Christian. Your job, I'm telling you, every last one, even the ones who go to church every time the door's open, even the ones who don't go to church half of the time, this is a full-time responsibility of bearing fruit. And the first one is love. And I like that because love is the foundation for all other uh, characteristics of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And in life, you remember John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Love is what everybody wants to receive. It may be not what everybody wants to give, but as a Christian, that's what you end up doing. You want to give love. Now, some of you grew up and probably don't know, understand what love really is because of the things that have been done to you in your life. And there's been some things that have been done in some people's lives that they don't even know what love is. They, all they know is how somebody can abuse them and beat them. And therefore, they, they're lacking understanding. 
of what love is. Well, for those of you that don't understand love, the Bible clearly gave, based on John 3, 16, he laid down his life for us. He died for us. He sacrificed himself. See, so the people that didn't do that to you in life, those are people who, if you can look at what they did, they were selfish. Where God wants you to understand that he gave himself up to love you. He loved you first. So, you know, one of the scriptures that we use this in dealing with love, and I want you to catch this, it's very important for us as believers to, to understand the concept of love if we don't know how to get it from other, uh, from the world. It says in 1 John 3, 11, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that you should love one another. Not, look at that, he tells you the contrast between loving one another and those who hate and destroy one another. And in 12, it says, not as Cain, who was that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother righteous. See the contrast? Just like you may have been someone who grew up in an environment where people beat the heck out of you, people treated you badly, He's saying that is not the love we want for one another. He said, model not in verse 13, my brethren, if the world hates you. Just like the Cain hated his brother that was righteous, the world will hate you because you have a right standing with God. 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life Think about that. We have moved from death to life. See, we're born spiritually dead, but in Christ we become spiritually alive because now we're connected back to God. It says, because we love the brethren. Huh? He that loveth not his brother abides in death. And that's what we want to make sure that you understand this. See, this ain't this is where I go to church, this is where I live, this is understanding this. I don't want to abide in death. I rather abide in love. By me hating somebody keeps me and pulls me to death. By me loving somebody pulls me to life. Verse 15, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer, and you know, no, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And you know, that's one of the things that I was sitting there <laughs> when I sit there and study this. And I listen to this, and I actually ask myself sometimes what, and I talked in the last video, people pass and teach their children to hate. And some of you grew up in, in, in a grew up in an environment where there was hate, and therefore that's all that you know how to give. But the problem is the, the, the society and the world that teaches you to hate doesn't understand that you, it's teaching them not to have eternal life. It teaches them to abide in death instead of life. And we're trying to tell you by bearing your fruits, especially with love, you abide in life. But if you abide in hate, then you abide in death. And all the atrocity that is done by people in the past, if they died in hate, they have no eternal life. We can put statues up for anybody, in the past, but if they died in hate, then they died in death. If you are in Christ Jesus, you, you abide in life. You have eternal life through Christ Jesus. But one of the things in knowing that you have eternal life in Christ Jesus is you have love for the brethren, love for one another. I ain't trying to be separate to anybody. Don't you do that. But I'm saying that you at least don't want to be somebody that causes pain for somebody, right? Love one another. But the, the main thing I look at the fact is that if you sit there and don't uh, give the, 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 the love to one another, you all you're doing is abiding in death. Get, get a clue. You don't abide in death, you abide in life. And you abide in life by loving one another. Love, you, you know, you have a relationship, you need to love one another in that relationship. You love one another to be able to tell the truth when you need to tell the truth. You need to be able to 
to lay down your life. It, and you know when we talk about letting your life, it's not always dealing with uh, dying, physically death. It's talking about putting yourself in your selfishness, your pride, for somebody else's benefit. That's loving one another. And you know, the part of that, the, the other part of the slide that deals with love is the rest of the John. It's where I look at it in verse 16. Hereby proceed we the love of what? God. Because look, look, he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever has this world's good and see his brother have needs and shut us up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwells the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Come on. Have you checked your fruit today? Have you checked your love today? Have you had compassion for those who are need? Have you understand that the God kind of love we talked about? And he demonstrated that even for you, God laid his life down for you. He laid his life down for me. So he's trying to tell us that we should be able to at least learn how to set aside our selfishness for somebody else. Have you checked your fruit today? Have you checked your love today? Check it out. Work it out. It's a daily walk. This just remind me of that. And you, there's a lot of us that I, I've talked to and I understand who have listened to this series. And some of you got offended because they've been hurt by so-called Christians or by so-called parents or by the world. And they don't understand what love is because all they've seen is the, the bitterness of what hate the world can do. And let, let you make sure you understand, I know that. But the point is that I, you or I receiving the Holy Spirit is to move away from what surrounds our environment to what is in us, which is the Holy Spirit. Oh man, that's what makes, that's the motivator. Knowing who's in me, not what's around me. It's people don't make my joy. People love. The world's love, you know how bitter it can be. But the love of God, that's why we should be able to love one another because we're taking on his character, his nature, amen? Hey, have you checked your fruit today? Have you checked your love today? Praise God. We got the word to understand. We are loving us. Let's go ahead and let it shine, Amen. All right, God bless. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll go ahead and move to the next segment after this, okay? So, see you next time. God bless. Have a good day. Bye-bye.